In the vast brackish waters of Chilika, 60-year-old Arjuna Malik is checking the brownish patches connected with bamboo. Arjuna is a fisherman of the largest water lagoon in India. But today, he's not on a boat with big fishing nets. Instead, he's carefully going around his field, checking the health of his crop like a farmer. This is how a typical day begins for a seaweed farmer in Chilika. Arjuna Malik comes from a long line of fishermen in the coastal state of Odisha. The sea is part of their lives and livelihoods. Odisha is the fourth largest fish producing state in the country, contributing to 2.33% of the state economy. But Cyclone Fani of 2019 and the ones that followed have had a massive impact on the lives of the fishermen. <laughs> With the fish population in Chilika dropping by almost 40%, there is a need for an alternate income source for the fishers. Dr. Deen Bandhu Sahu has led research on microalgae and seaweeds for the past 30 years. He believes algae is the future for coastal India and has the potential to be a great source of income for people in Chilika. In a country like India, where you have a huge coastline, you see, Odisha is having 480 kilometers of coastline, and uh, the demand for the seaweeds and its products are increasing at the level of almost 10% per annum. And it's a $19 billion industry, means 1,44,000 crores uh, rupees industry globally. So the scope is huge. So there are two strategies. One is you cultivate the seaweeds in the sea water and uh, brackish water. And also you go for the high value land based cultivation. But before we get into the potential of commercial seaweed in India, let's start with the basics. What are seaweeds? Seaweed is the common name for countless species of marine plants and algae that grow in the ocean as well as rivers, lakes and other water bodies. There are more than 840 identified species of seaweed in India's coastal waters, of which 51% are red algae, 26% are green algae and the remaining are brown algae. Seaweed, like all algae, is essential to the survival of our planet. Marine algae produces anywhere up to 50 to 80 percent of the world's oxygen. They also absorb a large amount of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, making it vital to the ecological balance of our world. Some seaweed has always been immensely popular in the food industry, especially in the East, where it was part of the cuisine. The Asian Pacific holds over 55 percent of the commercial seaweed market mainly through the food industry. They also are widely used as food additives and thickeners like carrageenan in pharmaceuticals, in the paper industry and as fertilizers. But despite its eastern popularity and vast potential, seaweed cultivation in India is still in its early stages. For the last several years, we have been carrying out uh, survey explorations for different types of seaweed species and we found some very very high yielding varieties of gracilaria. We brought it to the laboratory at Delhi University, did extensive study and started a pilot scale cultivation and transferred the technology to the field so that without introduction of any type of extra chemicals or uh, fertilizer uh, or even not introducing any species from outside we try to con uh, cultivate these two indigenous species at the Chilka Lake. India has a potential to produce around 9.7 million tons of seaweed per year. In 2022, the global production of seaweed was close to 35 million tons, which was worth around 16.5 billion US dollars. 
In comparison, India only had a production of 34,000 tons. Today, the Indian government has come up with a package of rupees 640 crores to promote seaweed cultivation of up to 1.12 million tons by 2025. Dr. Sahu is trying to make sure this fortune reaches the people in need. At the moment, the country is importing the seaweed products as well as the raw seaweeds for its processing. We have started this project keeping in mind three or four things in mind. Our first priority is women's empowerment and creating livelihood for the coastal people at different levels, starting from cultivation to the processing and to the value addition. Second is to save the lake from eutrophication. Third is to remove extra carbon dioxide through large scale seaweed cultivation so that it actually combat the climate change. Fourth is combating the acidification of ocean, which is going to be one of the biggest challenge, and then the removal of extra nitrate and phosphate from the level. The biggest challenge for Sahu and the people who cultivate seaweed is to have a stable market for the produce and the potential to expand further. Dr. Sahu is trying to find collaborators who will be able to collect the seaweeds from farmers directly, that too at a guaranteed price. We have always been in search of a variety which can give a sustainable livelihood to the farmers. And I must confess, you know, the challenge has been most of the native varieties which have been piloted and tested have really not views beyond the project stage. So when Dr. Sahu mentioned this initiative in Chilka, we were excited. We, I immediately made plans to come and see for myself and it looks promising but yet you know it is still a project which has to be commercialized. Seaweed can do a bit of everything from medicines to ice cream it has applications everywhere. Starting a seaweed farm is not expensive making it an alternate source of income for fishermen. It also has the potential to provide livelihood to women in the coastal community. Still, it has a long way to go to achieve the fullest of its potential. The next step is to upscale the production and make sure there's an industry which supports it. But on the shores of the Chilika, Arjuna and Dr. Sahu are optimistic that they are a part of a blue revolution from this eastern coastline.